But I want to get into ultimately what you think this institutionalization of ETH will really mean, because many feel, look, it won't be quite as popular as the Bitcoin ETF. Yeah, well, it's great to be with you again. And I loved seeing those clips of, of my colleagues and, and, and friends discussing uh, the developments we've seen in the ETH space. Um, I think these ETFs, we had the Bitcoin ETF approved earlier this year. We had the ETH um, ETF approved last week. Uh, believe that uh, we're going to show or allow retail to have a lot more access to these crypto assets. And, and we're going to see many more of these ETFs uh, being approved. And uh, it's, it's retail, it's institutions that don't want to custody their own assets. They want exposure to the upside these new technologies and crypto assets can provide. Uh, but but it's very clunky to go out and buy uh, ETH or or uh, Bitcoin and, and, and then uh, learn to trade it. And, and so these ETFs provide an alternative uh, for, for billions of people around the world. Many are gonna feel that the issue they have with the ETH ETF is they're not gonna be staking. They're not gonna be sort of getting money and rewards back if you're Fidelity who's running the ETF. Is there in that way gonna cause any liquidity issues? Is there any sort of a lack of ultimate demand coming because people do want to actually directly own Ethereum and then be able to stake it themselves. Yeah, so I think this was a concession, um, uh, you know, to, to get approval, a number of uh, the applicants for the ETF took out the staking um, part of it. I, I believe that there's enough upside in, in the core assets and, uh, uh, you know, there's so many developers. This is still one of the largest chains out mm. there. It's been around the longest. Uh, there are tons of decentralized applications being built. There are layer twos being built on Ethereum to make it more scalable. So uh, while staking can can provide um, you know some extra yield, I don't think it's necessary to be able to you know uh, uh, be able to realize the upside of, of the underlying asset. I mean, Jalak, you first what launched your first decentralized focused fund back in 2014. This must feel very strange for suddenly the government to almost pivot on a dime and be getting yep. more interested in crypto and ETH. What do you, is this because it's becoming politicized in some way ahead of the election? I, I think there's no doubt that it's being politicized. I mean, we had uh, Donald Trump come out and say that you know he support he would support uh, the crypto industry um, this administration the current administration has has been very anti crypto and and we start we started seeing that you know last year when uh, they shut down uh, a signature bank they uh, have made it very difficult uh, to to uh, provide clarity uh, around these uh, assets and and so uh, you know I, I think we we do we will hear more about crypto during this election. Um, and, and we're also seeing Congress really start to push through legislation that mm. will provide the clarity the industry has been looking for. Uh, last week, uh, FIT21 was passed by the House, and it was uh, pretty bipartisan. I mean, there were definitely more Republicans and Democrats that voted for it. Uh, but this bill will provide clarity on, on which uh, tokens will be under uh, SEC jurisdiction, which ones would be under CFTC uh, jurisdiction. And that's been a, a big sticking point of not knowing what's a security uh, and what's a commodity. Yeah. And um, and then there's also all sorts of other, you know, regulations that are putting it put in there and, and uh, customer protection. And so the industry can move forward. This goes to the Senate next and, and we'll see what happens. But Biden has, has uh, basically said that he's not going to veto it, uh, which is a positive sign.